paper. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> I just, uh, <laughs> you're going to need your hands to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <good job. laughs> yeah. yeah. Play by play on Sports Joe and Her. Brought to you by AIG in support of 20 by 20. We have a jam packed show for you today. Um, record breaking finals, flying discs, um, very muted goal celebrations. I'm Jenny Murphy, this is Play by Play. Uh, welcome back to the panel, Neve McAvoy, Dublin footballer. Hi. Um, and joining us is European champ, Irish ultimate frisbee, Fiona Myrna. How are you? Good. We've decided to like totally mix it up. We've been obsessed with uh, the Women's World Cup and now that's done and dusted, we've gone for something slightly more pancake shaped <laughs> and unusual as a sport and we've got to celebrate a European title. So thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. How did you take up? Oh, well, actually, no. Let's talk about the wins first and then let's get into it. Oh, sure. So you beat Switzerland in the final? Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, to final in like 37 degrees heat out in Hungary? Yes, it had a bit of a heat wave, so it was pretty hot. A few so of the days. Heavily ladder, ladder on the sun lotion there because it don't seem like you tan very well. <laughs> no, I don't. For, any, for anybody <laughs> just listening, redhead. <laughs> um, so, like 20. 20 <laughs> great start. bitch. Oh, I was She's good with that. That's yeah. fine. I'm, I'm, just, I'm over you hot. Have to have right? a skin. No, my hair is She's massive. Sweating. It's too warm outside. We just did an ultimate frisbee and I didn't win. Yeah, I thought that well, was well. <laughs> yeah, but it was controversial. So, of course, I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm not going to give it away, but I'm pretty pissed off with the whole how it laid out um, so I just went straight into it but you haven't given it away at yeah, all yeah great <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I'm bluffing oh yeah yeah great okay okay so 21 women squad uh, 15 team competition give us a little bit of details about the squad okay so the squad comes from all over Ireland uh, predominantly Galway Cork and Dublin and a few other places in between like Leach and Tipperary um, and then there's actually a couple of people living in the UK so uh, Glasgow and London but they're Irish citizens um, so we would all train separately for a good bit, uh, but then we come together for about one training weekend a month. So uh, most of us have been playing for, well, some of us have been playing for more than 10 years and then others have only been playing for a few years. So it's a good mix of experience as well. And how did you, how did you take up the sport? Was it like, because a, a lot of it, it, it's been growing here since the 90s. And mm. like my little brother played it for a little bit as well, but then realized that he's really, really bad. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> um, but like he started when he was in college. Is that where is that where most of the crew kind of took it up? Yeah, uh, a few of the younger ones now would have started in secondary school because there are more um, schools playing. But when I started, it was college. So my older sister, Ema, she would come back. She went to DCU as well. And she'd come back from different countries, having been to amazing party tournaments. And it looked like a lot of fun. Party tournaments. Yeah. So then I wanted to join straight away, but I uh, played other sports as well. So I was into a good bit of GAA as well. Um, and some table tennis as well, actually, at the time. So at the start, it was just a bit of fun. And then I got into it more seriously in my second year on of college. Um, and it got more competitive and less about the parties. <laughs> so then uh, it, it just became really enjoyable and then became my own, my only sport really. So if you were to, if you were to be like, explain it to a five-year-old or myself, <laughs> and Matthews, um, the yeah. rules and breakdown yeah. of, of ultimate, ultimate Frisbee, um, yeah. like in, in like, a minute or whatever, how would you kind of like, what does the pitch look like first? Or is it mm -hmm. even called a pitch? Yeah, we call it pitch. Um, what it looks like is a soccer pitch length, but it's 37 meters wide. So it's a bit more, it's a bit narrower. Uh, so it's 100 meters long. There are two end zones. So if you imagine like in rugby or American football, there are those tri zones or um, uh, scoring areas. That's what we have as well at the ends. And then in between is our kind of central playing zone. So the start of a game, you'd have each team line up um, on opposite ends at different end zones. One team has the frisbee in their hands and they throw it to the other team. So the team that just threw it is on defense and the team that's receiving it is on offense. Offense just means that they get possession at the start of the point, but at any stage they can turn over by either dropping the disc or uh, throwing it out of bounds or the defensive team then uh, might intercept it. So if that happens, then the other team takes possession and they're trying to score it the other way. So basically you have one end zone that each team is trying to score into at the start of a point 
And then when a point is scored or a goal, um, you basically restart the point with uh, each team lining up on the opposite end zones then. And, and then like the, the person, the team that scored, do they throw it back to... Yeah, okay. the, to start the next point. Now, to get the disc actually moving up the field, you have to, you're not allowed to run with the frisbee, so you have to stay on the spot. You can pivot around, a um, little bit like netball in that sense of basketball. Um, so you, and then you have to try and throw it to one of your teammates who can run around as much okay. as they want. No contact, I'm assuming. No contact, yeah. Uh, technically, uh, there <laughs> can be contact. Um, but you can, sometimes, you know, it just is incidental contact so it's like fair play and then other times you can call a foul because it's self-refereed yeah that's the, that's <laughs> what I was going to get at self-refereed yeah. holy god how yeah yeah I know it's a bit bizarre but essentially everyone should know the rules um, and when you feel like you've been <laughs> yeah that's the first part uh, when you feel like you've been fouled you can call a foul on the other on the opposition and they then just discuss it with you and you decide whether or not you did get fouled, so you retain possession, or you lose possession, or if it's contested, then the disc goes back to the last throw. Okay. So uh, there are other rules as well, like so if you're out of bounds, um, say you didn't see your last point of contact, um, but your the other teammates on the pitch did, they'll just call you out, and you can contest that as well. So you can contest any call, okay. <laughs> which is kind of where it can get a little bit... Um, uh, contentious feisty. and feisty, yeah, yeah. I exactly. can, I cannot picture you self refer Like, would that work? <laughs> would that work for you at a game of pitch backers? No, <laughs> yeah. like, no, no. Yeah. I is, can't. No, yeah. I can't imagine it at all. I wouldn't be. I'd be kicked off the team. Yeah. <laughs> so would you? I think it would be a disaster. You for me are as too. Well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's funny because you learn that the it's a culture. So you come into it, um, even if you spent years GA shouting at the ref or uh, rugby or anything like that, you just realise that's not how you do this. So everyone wants to actually play the game fairly because then you just get better outcomes and you get to play the game more. So if the longer you argue over a decision of in or out or foul or not foul, the, the worse the game is. So it's just not So it's like extreme anyone. sportsmanship. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, it's good that way. It's good like, for children. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> say in Wimbledon over the weekend, they have these like challenges and it's like, I mean, the most marginal of calls ever like that would not mm. sit well with me yeah do you know I'd be like you just do you know if you, you were winning by a point or something they then they called they were like oh you're out but you were like you literally couldn't tell unless you had VAR say for example yeah. I, Don't, let's not talk about VAR <laughs> we, we discuss VAR way too much I'd but say like, anybody that's listening is like like I'm disappointed the World Cup is over, but thank God Mackers and Jen <laughs> is going to shut up about Far. But no, ultimate frisbee. Let's talk about Far. <laughs> <laughs> well, interestingly, there was a call in the semi-final, and it was being streamed, so recorded. And we did have an in-out call where the girl caught it in the air, and we weren't sure if she landed in or out because she landed across the line, and we okay. weren't sure what the first body contact was, whether it was out or in uh, the pitch. So we looked at the video replay, but they still wouldn't. We couldn't really tell, to be fair. Yeah. So uh, they st it still actually just went back as a, we can't tell what the resolution is. But sometimes if a photographer is there and they have a shot and they can go over and say, oh, I actually have this on camera and you can have a look. And you like, do you like, you like the self-refereeing then? Uh, yes, but it's not perfect. But yeah. I do find, you know, you watch any sport, the referees are not perfect and people yeah. are very often complain about them at the end. It's the exact same with people. Yeah. So like the self-refereeing, so sometimes we don't get it right and sometimes we see something totally like you'll see something a bit different to the opposition simply because of your natural bias towards yeah. your own team sometimes so you're just trying to limit that as much as possible oh, <laughs> I'd be desperate oh, like yeah, yeah. Mackers would be over there ratting out her own teammates <laughs> <laughs> I'm only messing Mackers I'm only messing you're a great teammate yeah <laughs> great like I'm still like stuck on this so that's fair play and there's like so it's broken up into divisions you've got men's women's and mixed mm -hmm. and the women's team won the Europeans, yeah, all the glory. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it was great. So, did um, when you're over in Hungary, did you like have a, like a sherry or two, celebrate? You know, European uh, champions. Yes, yeah. we had a good night out. <laughs> so, the main party of the tournament is usually the night before the finals. So, we didn't get to enjoy that one. So, we were on the finals night, though. We went out and had a good time, but. Um, it was probably less wild than previous years, but it was very much. Was that because you were in the final? Yeah. yeah, I think we were all exhausted <laughs> as well. So it was a uh, very much a different kind of mentality. It was just. And then how, like, so say training? You were saying that you train um, separate to each other. So what was, 
what would a training session for you if you were just in your own look like and then what would it look like when you're getting together for those once a month kind of mm -hmm. camp weekends yeah so our trainings with our clubs are either one or two like uh, two hour sessions say um it can be 90 minutes to two hours and they'd be a lot more um trying to target the people of all levels at that stage so you're going to have people who are actually quite new to the sport and um, younger as well in some cases uh, maybe uh, uh, 16 years old and up and then you want to be able to teach them as much as possible so the intensity is can be a little bit lower and um, for the sake of developing the sport which is really important to us and um, for keeping the club environment uh, nice and enjoyable for everyone as well but then we also could do some, during the year we did some what we call pod sessions. So you'd get out with about, um, like you can go on your own or just as few as three or four people and try to do more intense sort of specific drills for yourself uh, with a few others. And then when we get together, um, we would train for about four to five hours each day on the Saturday or Sunday, one weekend a month. I'm sorry, both days. So it would be about eight to 10 hours training over the two days. And that would be all very much like tactic specific as well as uh, some specific skills that you want to drill in. But it'd be a bit more about how we as a team want to play. And now these are the skills we want you to have before the next training weekend as well. And like for, if you were to like break it down, I know like sometimes there's, you know, mass running or interval running, like mm. so like a heavy focus on sprints because I know it's like bursts. Or are you, because it's, the game obviously can last 100 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, is it more endurance kind of training that you're looking for or like a just a complete mix? Because I know that you're saying earlier on the show, like you do hit the gym and it's maybe less about you know, bulking up and more injury mm -hmm. prevention or that those core muscles. What like is this? sprints that you're focused on primarily or yeah well speed is massive in this sport so if you are fast just keep training to be fast and if you're not trained to be fast <laughs> uh, after that then so you want sprint endurance because um, <laughs> <It's not nice. laughs> um, uh, even just over short distances if that's what you prefer but over that um, then you need to get a bit uh, more endurance at that so because the games are 100 minutes but you're not on for the whole time because we can substitute in between points as many players as we want. Oh, so it's kind of like roll, like a little bit like rolling subs. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. So okay. yeah, so some points, like our defensive line had what we call a zone defense and they could, they kept, I believe it was filling out for about 10 to 15 minutes at one stage for one point. So in that case, you, sometimes you do need a lot of endurance. That's a little bit more aerobic based, but then uh, our O-line could be out for just like one sprint into the end zone and we get a one pass score. So it's quite different uh, depending on your role as well sometimes, but um, um, mostly what you want is sprint in speed and sprint endurance. Gross. <laughs> Max, think you give it a crack after the gay career? Mm, I'll think about it. The, the self officiating is still kind of. <laughs> you know, I'm still like, I'm still thinking about it. I'm like, how? <laughs> um, injury wise, for um, Ultimate, what are the, the main kind of ones that you come across yourself? Because I know you're SNC and a physio as well, so you'd be well able to like take care of your teammates if something does happen to them. Yeah. Like, or I'm like, I'm thinking, like, is it broken fingers or is it more from the falls? Uh, yeah, so it can be a lot of things. Um, I suppose from falls, we see a fair few shoulder dislocations, um, even just landing on it a bit funny. And you can get a couple of fractures along the way. They're not too common, but sometimes just if you land funny on your arm or hand. And then otherwise, you'd see ankle sprains quite a bit from all the changes of direction and the takeoff from jumps and landings. And then some knee issues as well will kind of be predominant. A few like ACLs are likely to go the odd time as well. Um, <laughs> as you know, <laughs> yeah. it sounds pretty similar to like our sports. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it is quite similar in that regard. Um, and then otherwise, we actually even get concussions the odd time as well because, again, people have banged heads or just landed on their heads. See, yeah. there's one thing that's great about having a massive woolly head. It's, like, <laughs> it's pretty much like wearing a helmet, so I think I'd be safe in that regard. Yeah. Savage. Um, and like, so you're like, you, you get, would you get like when, you're, when you tell someone like, oh, I play Ultimate Frisbee, what's the, what's the reaction that you get? Is it, because it's, mm. really, it's getting popular here, so that a lot of people know about it, is can you see a shift yourself of, instead of it being like, what's, what, what is that to more like, I know what you're on about. It's a lot better now compared to like 10 years ago where 
the person would actually just laugh when you said it uh, and just be like, did he play that with a dog? Uh, so what? <laughs> yeah, it used to be the reaction of, oh, you just go play that with a dog a lot. Um, and then it kind of put you off wanting to explain it. But people are way more open-minded now. It's really, really nice to hear people just like kind of ask about it or if they have heard about it, they'll say, um, oh yeah, that looks really good. And usually anyone that has seen it has really positive things to say about it. And they're like, oh, you have to be really fit to play that as yeah. well. So it's a uh, much more positive reception to it these days which is nice so I was looking at some um, YouTube highlights before I came on there's some yeah, yeah some pretty <laughs> impressive stash like I'd probably belly flop everywhere so it's not something that I'd take up <laughs> like full force diving on the mm. ground yeah it's been... how old is the sport like so in Ireland uh, it came about in 1995 it okay. started uh, but in the 1960s I believe it started in the US We're, oh okay mm. and that's where it originates from the US yes. yeah. okay, okay is it professional over in the States or um, there is a semi-professional league at the minute um, the AUDL so tempted to go over and give it a crack <laughs> it's uh, yeah well actually it started as uh, male dominated they didn't have a women's division there was a lot of uproar about that but I think women there's a couple of women in it now as well because actually in open or men's women can play as well um, so um, I'm not too tempted but <laughs> there have been a couple of Irish players that have gone over actually to play um, with some of the teams I know that Michael D tweeted about it know, like yeah. I'm sure you're like <laughs> well hopefully you get more at training and stuff as well where, where do you see or where would you like to see the sport go? Oh yeah uh, I'd love to see it in more schools and I suppose a bit of a dream is to just see um, as frequently as children and families bring out a football that they bring out a frisbee as well to the park and so it's just a little bit more uh, normal and then if we could get it um, more girls playing as well we're at a bit of a poor ratio at the minute of like about 200 female members and 400 male members I think uh, so if we could get that to be more equal I'd really like to see that happen and just have a lot more playing opportunities around the country because at the minute it's very much there's only one Dublin women's team and there's one Cork women's team and there's smaller teams around other areas as well but it's hard to get a lot of game opportunities um, within Ireland just because distance, of that yeah. yeah exactly and just uh, numbers and such yeah well, myself and Mackers did uh, did try it out there earlier. Um, I'm still dying. I was reaching for an inhaler that I don't have. Um, but I would strongly recommend giving it a crack. Um, take a look at how we got on outside. It was actually good fun, except I just don't agree with the decision. So have a look, guys. Hey, I'm Jenny Murphy, rugby player. I'm joined by Dublin footballer Neve McAvoy, ultimate frisbee champ, European champ Fiona Myrna. We're going to throw around this disc and see who is crap at it. <laughs> <laughs> Macker is going to be crap at it. So I'm going to explain to you how to throw a backhand and a forehand in ultimate frisbee. Uh, first of all, we're going to go through the grips. So for a backhand, it's pretty straightforward. You just want the thumb on top and the fingers underneath. So with the backhand then, you just want to be able to bring your wrist back and throw it through. Now, most people know this kind of throw. Um, so. Uh, that's kind of straightforward. People get comfortable. So we that shouldn't be rubbish at that. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Well, what no can... pressure straight away. You shouldn't be crap at that. Okay. Usually Brilliant. people can get some air time on it. Okay. It's the accuracy and the distance that uh, people struggle with okay. at the start. But yeah, you'll be good at that. Um, so then with the good. forehand. <laughs> yeah. it good. Uh, with the forehand then, you just want to get your two fingers underneath. So the middle finger will just align along the rim and the a pointing finger, I like to say, points towards the middle, so that little dot that's usually in the frisbee. Your thumb is on top, and you want to get a tight enough grip, so you don't really want a gap here, you want to push it right in. That way you're going to be able to keep it stable as you bring it forward You're going to back. be able to. <laughs> yeah, you will. Mm. I'm giving you a belief here. So who do you think is going to be better? Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you could have different... Um, oh, strength oh, yeah, different strengths. Strengths. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Strengths. They're very great. Okay. Let's see. Get cracking? Good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you're just standing next to each other and you get to jostle for position. You're not allowed to hit each other though. You're allowed to like... like Can't so. jostle with her. She's like a wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are yeah. you doing? I just... Uh, yeah. You're going to need your hands to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll do two, one of Two nil. <laughs> two nil and back Oh, my God. Okay, and I'm going to 
have to give the winning frisbee to Neve, I think. Yeah. <laughs> she yes. had a little less Please. contact sure in the place. Still a bit of contact, but it's a non-contact sport. What, so I'm, what I'm saying she hearing is she was a bit less competitive, <laughs> so we're giving her to her. Yes. Well, thank you. You're thank welcome. you so much. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. Okay, so we're back. Um, if you want to check out how myself and Macros got on outside, you can jump on YouTube. Basically, I lost, but I don't agree with the decisions. So my whole, like, I don't trust yourself refereeing. I feel like it was flawed. <laughs> um, I'm not bitter about it. I just think that you're wrong. Um, and we're just going to move swiftly along from there. So, yeah, thanks for coming on the show, Fiona. Good day. Uh, okay, so now we're going to give we're going to give Macros actually a little test, right? So these are some ultimate terms. So if you're in the know, it's not ultimate frisbee. Sometimes they abbreviate it Macros, just call it ultimate. Okay. Just letting you know. So we're gonna we're gonna see how you measure up. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, Macros. What do you think a bullet pass is? We'll start off easy. Just a really hard, quick pass, like low. I will accept that. Yep, fast moving pass, usually low to the ground. You! Pretty on the <laughs> money, Mackers. Okay, <clears throat> a cherry picker. A high pass. A floaty... A floaty... Like that's floaty not, that's not a bad guess. That you have to pluck no. out of the sky? No, it's somebody that waits in the end zone, like a goal hanger. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> You're a full forward. Get away. Two goals of the weekend. Out center, which we'll get from to center it. forward. Grand, <laughs> fine. Conservation of greatness. Oh, it's a wild term. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a David Attenborough kind of like... I feel like it could be shortened. Uh, conservation. Right I'm going to get Fiona to explain this. Because <laughs> yeah. I'll mess it up. Um, Any guess? Oh, well, I have to have a guess. Yeah. guess. Yeah. Okay. Is it something to do with self-officiating? No. <laughs> Is it somebody... Oh, no, no. Non-contact. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Fiona, will you please explain... Conservation of greatness. So if you understand the term layout, is that coming up? Layout. No, it's not coming up. Okay, okay, so layout is to like dive down towards the floor to try and catch a frisbee. So say you do something amazing like that or you sky someone and you're really high in the air, you grab the disc over someone's head. Um, so you look really great, so that's your greatness. But then the next throw, you just turf it into the ground. So you have to conserve your greatness by actually doing something good the next time. Okay. You, you have a play. <laughs> that was a way better explanation oh, right. than what I had written down, so thank God for that. That's good. Okay, um, we've, we've already touched on what a, a pancake is, so it's a type of cap where players put both hands on top and bottom of the disc. Marker, what did you call what the clap? Call... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the clap catch. Catching the clap. <laughs> Man, did you see Macker? She caught the clap so good. <laughs> no, like you catch it like this. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. You're just filthy. Sorry. You're moving, just... moving along, Macker. <laughs> moving along. Uh, bookends. Um, they're another position, another type of player, defender type person. Fiona, you take this. Okay. So it's usually when you get the D, so you intercept the pass, and then you also get the score. Okay. Of that point, of the same oh, point. Right. <laughs> Close enough. I feel like there's some pretty there's some pretty good terms there. Anyway, we should probably move it on. Um, Sounds a bit like Quidditch. Some of the terms. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> That's fair like yeah, and you can still and you can block with your foot and everything as well. Can you? Yes. Yeah. So once you don't touch the person as they try to release the disc, you can try and block the disc. Oh, okay. So just as after they've thrown it. So yeah, you can You can literally block with anything. Anything, yeah. 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 Your oh, face. Wow. Your face, it's happened. So like people <gasps> people are like breaking wrists from like landing mm. on the ground like more or less rather than people getting smashed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there have been broken noses from follow throughs on like backhands and stuff. And it's not a foul. And not really. that's kind of just unfortunate usually. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was unfortunate that I smacked you in the face. Yeah. 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 Okay, but, yeah. nice, yeah. nice. Start. Okay. But this ultimate rugby, it's like for the <laughs> frisbee. frisbee. Sorry, ultimate. I was, I was getting confused. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about Wimbledon. I'm thinking about ahead. We've like chatted frisbee. Um, any of you guys catch any Wimbledon at the weekend? Just the end. I just saw the women's or ladies final at the end, um, but didn't really get to see much of it because it was quite quick. <laughs> the women's was quite quick. The men's. Yeah. Not so much. Okay, we'll chat okay. about. We'll, get, we'll chat about uh, Williams and. 
help first. Um, Mackers, you're our tennis correspondent as well. I'm just like, anything that I'm like, well, I'm not really sure. I'm just going to <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just like a fan. I don't have like a particular player that I like, absolutely love or anything. I just like, obviously just tune into all the slams all the time. Yeah. But um, I ha generally like, when Serena, you know, when she was going for like the Serena slam and stuff, I wouldn't be up for when I'm watching matches, but just because I'm always up for the underdog, you know, yeah. kind of way. Not like I think she's an incredible athlete. I love her values. I love everything she stands for. I love what she's trying to do for women in sports and stuff. We always like to see like an yeah, underdog like, do well. Like, her first, like it's her first Wimbledon and she played unbelievable. Yeah, but no, but I uh, sorry, I was just about to say. This time round, I actually was up for Serena because she hasn't won a slam since she had a baby. And I've heard lots of talk, chat about like, oh... It's the child's fault. Yeah. Once you have a pregnancy, <laughs> once you have a pregnancy or once you have a baby, like you're not the same person, which is completely false. It's so incorrect. I've mm. seen so many amazing women go and have children and come back and still be able to, you know, perform at the same level. Serena Williams is still getting to like... Grand Slam finals. Obviously, she's still the same athlete. Do you know what I mean? She's incredible. If anything, it might just be, you know, she wasn't able to, you know, train, like, keep her touch up and stuff, but she's still, like... But as well as that, like, she's still getting to those finals and it took someone that played the best match of her life of to beat time. her. Mm -hmm. She it was, was unbelievable. Like, yeah. Serena Williams, straight sets in under an hour. I read something about during the week and I think it was a record in terms of the smallest amount of unforced errors ever. So like Serena brings that out and people like you have to play the very best that you can play to beat her. And that's just the type of athlete she is. So like to say that she's not, she didn't win or she's not winning because of, because she had a baby, like that's ridiculous. This amount of help, like yeah, didn't so have any errors. Three, like, three, she needed three. No, and you're like, crazy. I can't catch a break here if you're playing against, you know, like jammy things are happening you know I can't think of anything in, in GA but like yeah like it hitting three posts and going over the bar or something you know what I mean yeah like, but that's 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 why I think Serena is so great it's you have to be at your best yeah and then some to beat her mm. um so she like and I think she spoke about this herself she's like you need to earn the win against me which is like only fair mm. enough so yeah she's had a baby but she'll mm. get into finals I think she's going to hit 24 might be against Wim in Wimbledon, yeah. but I think I think it's coming as I well. I think she has a slam in her. I just want it to happen soon so that we can stop this rhetoric around like having babies and do you know what I mean? Because obviously like that's a natural thing. It's badass. Like she's such a badass. You know what I mean? She had a baby and she's in the Wimbledon final. Like she's still because people people were saying like oh possibly she should retire. People still want to be on the other side of the draw to her. You know what I mean? Like yeah. hopefully someone else beats her and then I get to the final and I don't have to play her. Like yeah. she's still that person. You know the kind of way. But um, yeah, no, I hope she wins Slam soon. Just to net to like nail that on the head. That's so that's not. And did you, it just infuriates me. Did you um, hear the poll that was done um, oh, yeah. by in in the UK? It was something like uh, one in eight. One in eight men yeah. said that they would be able to score a point against Serena Williams. Score like points, 12, huh? 12 percent of them were like, <gasps> "Oh yeah, I could." But like, are they well. hoping for a double fault or what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I don't know. Just, <laughs> just, uh, just uh, like yeah, yeah. Levels, levels of delusion are gas sometimes. Yeah, not a chance. I, if I had like. If I was playing, if we were playing doubles against Serena Williams, <laughs> triples against yeah, Serena yeah. Williams, we still would get a point. Yeah, I know. So, I yeah. Agree. <laughs> but yeah, but we are women, you see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe if we're men. <laughs> Fair enough. I love that confidence. <laughs> sake. Okay, so we spoke about Serena Williams, uh, the loss in under an hour. Let's speak about moving on to the men's tournament. Four hours, 57 minutes, Federer Djokovic. Gross. <laughs> Super gross. That was, that was, uh, yeah, you watched it again. Absolute yeah. cracker. How, he's 37. How was it, how was, how was his legs still attached to his hips? But he even, he didn't, like, I'm the type of person who sometimes I actually look tired and I'm not tired at all. I think I'm just like big and I don't know, can be like labor sometimes. But of the two of them, Djokovic was showing signs of like being tired in his body language and stuff and Federer was just like you know the like cool he, calm face yeah, and he was, he was just like lining up for the next point he like, had more aces more like he'd all like in stats wise yeah. if you if you didn't know who won or lost it would be like oh Federer has come out on top here 
like strength as from strength and conditioner what is he doing that he's <laughs> still so fresh yeah sorry I'm just obsessed with the conditioner yeah. you know yourself you oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you have to explain your data sorry we know uh, S&C and physio yeah so uh, working out in Con Griffin um, in a sports performance kind of clinic so uh, yeah I really try to help people be really good at their sport so with regards to uh, Federer I think it's psychological a lot of it as well yeah. so the strength is just hugely there and you know, that gets you really, really far. Um, I kind of think that's with Serena, it is just a little bit too much pressure from the media as well. Psychologically, okay. I wouldn't be surprised if just sometimes it just hits her a little bit more than others, especially when the other player is playing at the top of their game. So um, with, yeah, with Frederick, I mean, you need a lot of the natural basics of strength and able to go for four hours, 55 minutes. So you're just going to need a lot of repeat power endurance um, and also uh, just your base aerobic levels. If they're really good, you're going to be able to recover faster between. But I think psychologically as well, you need to be able to kind of keep yourself calmer because you're going to expend less energy then. As yeah, well. neither of them even celebrated a point. Yeah. The way, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, they just... Similar would, to yourself. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> but like, with some of the amounts, of, I don't know, tennis terminology but like some of the drop shots I think but like incredible tennis and they just like walk back then for the next point and I'm like oh my god and the place was going mental and they were both just like consummate like sports In the zone. people like yeah it was just ridiculous it was ridiculous I was watching it with my brother and I was like I'd have given up an hour ago <laughs> <laughs> you can have a maze on the fucking rack <laughs> Long. Like I think balls do that thing of like what you can do in like but four it's so hours. Hot. It's yes, or like during mm. the weekend. It was roast. Yeah. So like we're looking at like ten like for longev longevity in certain sports you've got, you know, certain well, in rugby anyway, certain positions you're you can last a little bit longer, like in, in term for me now it's not the be all and end all, but like wingers and maybe centres tend to be a little bit younger when they retire and then with front rows they might start a little bit later um, when they're getting their caps, just because it's, it's such a technical thing and it's very physical as well. But you kind of, the only way you can get better at it is by keep on doing it and replication all the time. So like they would retire a little bit earlier. But like age profiles in in Ultimate Frisbee, what's, is that like, is there a huge variation? Or? Um, you can actually keep going as long as you, yeah, you have to keep your body as healthy as possible. But there are people in their 40s that are playing. Um, there's the eldest a uh, female player in the country would be in her 40s now, early 40s, and she's had a baby, so she's doing <laughs> really well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but then also there is a master's division, so um, as people get older, if their joints start to get a little creakier or whatever, there's kind of two options. They can start playing in the master's, so they're in 33 years of age or older, and also there's a form of be beach ultimate, so the sand is a lot easier to run on for like knees, stiff knees and hips and stuff and low backs and such. So people can gravitate towards that a little bit more. So it's easier to stay in the sport for longer because of those options. But as well, just as long as you are keeping yourself fit, like like 10 years ago, people wouldn't have been doing strength and conditioning half as much as they are now. And a lot of people were having to retire because of injury in their late 20s. Um, but now because people are a little bit more savvy, they uh, kind of stay in the game for longer. And, it is and what Jen was saying there about, you know, obviously different rugby's like there's so many different specialised things going on. But obviously it's the same in, say, GA in the sense that in terms of like aerobic capacity, the midfielders would have to mm -hmm. be like able to go longer. Like the inside forwards would have to be like doing sprint stuff, quicker stuff. Yeah. Is it the same? like is there different types of you know athlete that would play different positions or yeah you could we don't I'd love us to get to that level we don't have that level at the minute where people are doing very different conditioning yeah. plans but there would certainly be some players that would run over greater distances or do more shuttle like movements yeah and um, if, if anyone watches like um American football, it's a bit like they have to do their patterns of play and try and cut to get free. Yeah, okay. uh, it's very like that uh, when you're downfield, whereas the handlers, um, there's kind of a joke that the handlers are the lazy ones because okay. they uh, pick up the disc and try to throw downfield. I take it that you are a cutter then. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. yeah, more of a cutter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then they will cover shorter distances because they want to be the safe person near the disc, so they try and... Handlers. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And your throwing is very good already. <laughs> so, uh, so then they yeah, they'd have shorter distances. And then if you're on defense, again, your positions can be slightly different. So you could be marking 
if you're American handler, you're doing lots of little short, quick movements. So you want to be quite agile. So if you're smaller, yeah. that suits you better because mm -hmm. you have a lower center of gravity. If you're taller, right. yeah, so that's where. <laughs> uh, but taller and water. I was yeah. already on at the self officiating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it could be a little bit different. Yeah. So you've got like a wide variety of, of ages and stuff. Because I know at rugby as well, not with the women, but like with the men, and hopefully, like when we get a little bit older and stuff, they have like the vintage. Um, oh, yeah. teams so you'll see guys like playing like 40 plus with like no knees they have it in the GAA <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It's, it's what, what about age profiles GAA wise like is there like I know you were saying midfielders have to do a certain job and full for whatever it's, it's very different what you want athletically from your teammates is there certain positions that can last they can, longer yeah um, I don't know I think it comes down to the individual as well like Denise Masson when she retired like she had played her last season started in midfield so I think it's just the type of person as well like and it's how you've minded yourself over the years what you've done maybe five years ago to recover and stuff like if you haven't like it's not just you start to mind yourself when you get old like you have to mind yourself the whole throughout your whole career and if you are one of those people who did do that then you can like reti retire on your own terms and you will be able to stay at the pace type of thing but um, probably like er early 30s is when I'd say most people would retire and um, you probably play a couple more seasons then with your club but yeah because like, I know that like uh, like Lynn Cantwell she's a she's the girl I played we played centre together and Lynn was in her early 30s or mid 30s mm. for the our 2014 World Cup and we we're doing like fitness testing and um, yo-yos and stuff like the most crack and mm. um, and eventually, like, there was, like, a drop-off and we were all, like, whatever. And then Lynn kept, was, kept going. I think she, she would have been one of the older yeah. girls in the squad. Like, really talented rugby player. Um, absolute arsehole, <laughs> but, like, really talented. No, I love her. Um, and she finished anyway, got her results, like, did well. And then when we got our results back, some Munster S&C coach for the men's team or someone involved with Munster kind of called our S&C because all your fitness scores are put into a, a database, a yeah. national database so you can like see where someone lies or whatever and they were kind of like just checking is that score correct for Lynn Cantwell and yeah yeah it's she beat a lot of the Munster outside backs in terms of fitness scores like yeah. she was just a freak unbelievable yeah. yeah and I think but as well as that it's smart and she took care of herself as well like so she knew kind of how to play the game and she wasn't an idiot and looking for contact 24-7, so I think that definitely <laughs> helped as well. Um, well, we spoke about rugby players. Let's, let's move. Let's talk about rugby. So, um, so uh, World Rugby, I'm saying rugby loads, uh, they released a report recently. So there was a surge in women's participation. So you got 9.6 million players registered globally. Um, and there is a rise, a 28% rise in registered players, um, female players. So it's like 2.7 million pretty good do you think so that's it's always good to like see a surge in any kind of in female participation in any sport is there parity between men and women in the ultimate frisbee world same question to you as well can you go first uh yes uh there is unfortunately we're trying to change it um but i think because it just naturally starts that if you're starting a club in any one place, so whether it's in college or in a local area, the males gravitate towards it a lot easier and faster than females. And if there isn't, if that person who's starting it off isn't actively trying to keep it equal from the start, it just won't get equal. So now we're kind of trying to play catch up where we're trying to make the numbers even now. So uh, there is, there was, um, I think it was a 20, a uh, 6% increase in female members uh, bet for last year compared to the year before, and this year's numbers aren't uh, finalised yet. Um, so we did do a good job last year, but it's still got a good way to go. So it's about uh, two is to one males to female ratio. And like you were speaking, like, you know, we said men, women, and then there's the mixed. How, how, would tr how would you do kind of training for that? Is it like you're still doing the same amount of fitness or is it, is it kind of like this is the score that or the speed score that we need you to hit? Or hmm. is there like, how do you manage the kind of, Mixed? Um, it's not quite at that level, so it wouldn't be that specific, but um, mixed is kind of interesting in that there aren't a lot of mixed clubs in the country, but we try and make them as open and inclusive as possible, and they're a little bit more about kind of social um, 
environments for people to just come along and play. Uh, they're slightly less competitive, so we don't really have a super exclusive competitive mixed team um, anywhere, so everyone can play, so it's a little bit more about that social side. Um, in terms of when it gets to national teams as well, this year uh, the mixed team actually did really well in the end, but they were struggling because there was a lot more focus in the women's and men's teams, so then it kind of uh, took a lot of the top end players um, and then a few others um, that were still very good players, they're, they're still not available, say, um, for the tournament and such. So when you're actually combining the two, it's basically, um, it's really interesting because you have different strengths between the two. So um, you're looking to keep the um, strengths of each without like bashing into each other, say, so like actually getting in each other's way on the field. So the men are generally faster and taller, so we need to work together so that the women are actually able to get the disc um, and give them the space that they need and the time in order to get free and get those passes because it's such a weapon when you actually coordinate that really strongly. So being able to um, figure that out from the start from whatever team you're on is really beneficial to any sort of mixed team. Uh, that's like it. That sounds like. Would you play in a mixed gay team? Is there any? Would you give that a crack? Um, I don't because obviously it's contact. Like yeah. I don't know if it would be yeah. possible. Yeah. Um, because obviously they're just stronger than us. Um, and oh, swift kick to the shins, <laughs> <laughs> and then you self referee be like, was me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. No, I don't think I don't think it would ever be an option in the the. Gay to football, I don't think so. But like positive, like you were saying about the, the the rise in popularity with Ultimate Frisbee, ladies GAA, especially over the last what four or five years, it's been yeah. huge. So you've got like sponsors like AIG doing massive things. Yeah. And um, obviously the set success that Dublin have experienced, but the quality of games that we get to see as fans as well is huge. Is that number going to keep on growing? Like you see, like even locals, like the local pitch when I'm driving by, you'll have a look and it's you know, minis, and it's yeah. like, it's nearly 50-50 a lot of the time, which is huge. Yeah, like, definitely, like, even from from when I would have started myself, there's, like, huge uptake in it now in um, in Ladies GAA. There's, like, way more um, juvenile teams in my club than, like, I didn't play. I played, would have played with the boys. I know it's something that always comes up. Um, I would have played with the boys growing up, but now there's, like, so many girls' teams. It's not quite 50-50, like, there's, say, there's two minor teams, two two minor boys teams and there's a, there's one minor girls team like so it still is but it's certainly come a huge like even in the last five or six years it's come on leaps and bounds in terms of participation but there is still that thing where girls tend to kind of drop off um at a certain age and I saw it in my own club I was really disappointed by this um there was a young girl and she was playing um up with us up at adult level and she was still minor it was her last year minor and um she maybe like wasn't getting into the team and just kind of was a bit disappointed wanted to know why like she's a competitive person we're all competitive you know if things aren't going your way you're going to bring it home and you're going to be like oh I'm upset about this or whatever and um yeah her parents were just like oh just give it up if you don't but then like she has a brother who would be similar age to her and that absolutely wouldn't have been said you know the kind of way and maybe that's just one instance maybe that's not something mm. that is like common occurrence but I do think there is still a situation there where boys are encouraged more to play sports um, than girls are. I think it's definitely improving. Um, there's a huge amount of encouragement to play sports in terms of like the media have, have been really good to ladies football in recent years. I think in and around Dublin, I've obviously, I think us winning has helped our area. I think if say like any other county of Galway were to win the All Ireland, like there would be a, an uptake there. That like obviously success breeds success. People, more kids want to get involved. Like they see you playing in Crow Park or on a big stage, and and they kind of want that for themselves. So I think definitely in Dublin, I've seen more and more kids taking it up. Um, on the back of kind of maybe successful seasons we've had. Um, but yeah, no, it is. It's overall, it's really really positive. And uh, as I said, like. We are more visible in the media than we would have been when I first started playing with the senior team like 13 years ago. <laughs> like we, like nobody, you know, little have done great things for ladies football. The LGFA have have really pushed on. Um, AIG for uh, my team personally, like for the, the Dublin team, have been absolutely amazing. Um, so I think yeah, there's a lot of positive things. Like they're breaking in. That are really, it's yeah. not just like even I. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a surge in kids playing. Uh, in young females taking up soccer 
just because the Women's World Cup was on TV and it's so important and sometimes people think you're beating the drum you're like oh well we're not getting that exposure but the exposure is so important to kind of perpetuate the growth of the sport and like I was listening to you chatting about you know you you want the sport to grow so you're kind of like keeping it social trying to keep it inclusive like forever and it's the same like you're down at the nursery and you just like you want to you know keep it social and the nursery sorry for the kids like um but you just you just need them to both be getting the same level of encouragement then when it gets to a certain point where it is competitive you know the kind of way like it's not just I don't know yeah it's just well like speaking of encouragement I've been told in my ear that I have to compliment you for the two goals that you scored <laughs> um, against, against begrudgingly <laughs> It was good. They were good goals. So, yeah, well done. Congrats on the win, by the way. Thanks very much. So you're facing Monaghan next? Yeah, we've Monaghan in two weeks. Um, actually at home, which is great. Um, so obviously we, we didn't get great numbers out at our last match. The men were playing in the evening at 7 o'clock, but we were away. So we didn't get great numbers out. So hopefully we can get... Um, we're at home in Parnell Park, so hopefully we can get numbers out. Give me a day. Give support. me a time. <laughs> I actually... I'm so bad. So it's like Saturday two weeks from our last match <laughs> I just turn up Jen I don't oh, know <laughs> brilliant brilliant so nice. yeah so yeah you have to follow you on Twitter basically just to get all the updates yeah that's yeah, it she's picking up on social huge yeah. for the self promotion she's unbelievable I know best of luck against Monaghan anyway thank you very you much thanks Macker uh, that is all we have time for Fiona thanks so much for coming on and for trying to teach us two dopes how to play ultimate frisbee um, how do we get involved if Macker suddenly decides, ah, do J's, do JAs and for me, and give us some details. How, how, can, we, how can anyone listening jump on board? Uh, the best way would probably be to go to irishultimate.com, where you can find out all the information about where there are teams playing near you, or if you want to get your school involved or anything like that, that's where the information will be. So, website again? irishultimate.com. Perfect. Thank you much for joining us. Thank you so much for listening. That's all we have time for. Yeah.